Yesterday, DJI released the brand new Ronin RS3 and 3 Pro. Now, I already put out my big cinematic video, so if you haven't seen that already, make sure you go check it out after this video. We go super in depth and use it in all sorts of crazy scenarios. But immediately, I started getting comments asking for specifics about this setup, and so I thought it'd be cool and fun to kind of break this down and show you how exactly am I rigging out my brand new RS3 Pro. So first, Let's reverse engineer this and tear it down. Should probably shoot the thumbnail for this. So first, let's start with, of course, the camera. I am shooting on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. I keep it cageless because it fits better on gimbals. It's more nimble and versatile. Pros and cons to it, but for my use case, keeping it pretty naked. The only thing I have on top is a Condor Blue quick release, which we'll get to in a second. And instead of using the USB-C cables and SSDs, Angel Bird is an awesome partner of the channel and they always hook me up with some of their latest CFast memory. So right now we're shooting on the one terabyte CFast 2.0 from Angel Bird. Of course, all this stuff will be linked down in the description if you wanna check it all out for yourself. We have the viewfinder built on top and I'm so stoked that this gimbal and everything can still utilize the battery grip since there's two more batteries in here in addition to the one. So this gives me a lot more battery life. Now I got a comment on yesterday's video talking about how someone was experiencing a lot of like wiggle between the battery grip and the body. Uh, I personally haven't had that issue at all. It's a pretty tight fit and it doesn't really come loose. And on the bottom, we just have the quick release plate for the gimbal, which of course we'll see in a few minutes. For lenses, I pretty much exclusively shoot on Iric Cine lenses. This is the 45. A lot of times for the gimbal, I use the 15, but we're using that right now. And then for audio, my favorite mic of the past like six months or so has been the Sennheiser MKE 440. It's a stereo mic. It gives a really unique, but insanely clear sound. And I just, I love it so much. And this has become a unstoppable combo. Again, I'm using that Condor Blue quick release, which I'm absolutely in love with. Plugged in right there. And now we got our camera set up. So now the gimbal. Of course, start with the basic tripod and we have the battery grip. I saw for the RS3, they're gonna be selling these individually. I hope they also sell these individually for the RS3 Pro um, because that'd be really nice since this setup with the LiDAR and the max capacity camera, uh, chews through batteries pretty quickly. So if I could have two or three of these, that'd be really nice. I also said in my review yesterday, but I'm a little sad that it's quarter 20, bigger size of five eighths or whatever, just gives me much better peace of mind. And a lot of pro gimbals have that larger uh, screw on the bottom. And then of course we have the gimbal head. This is the RS3 Pro again. Connects, tightens. Oh, and I forgot to put on one of the biggest things that people asked about. So in yesterday's video, a lot of people were asking what battery I mounted on the side here. This is the Zion trans mount system. Uh, it actually came with my Crane 3S gimbal years ago. And ever since this has become my top five favorite like camera gear accessories. It's almost like a super mini V mount battery. And so I basically modified, unscrewed the uh, phone mount that the gimbal comes with and I just use the NATO rail, and then this comes with a little mini V-mount locking, tighten that nano rail right there, and now we have a mini V-lock battery. And this has a USB-C in and out, so you charge it with it, as well as I can run a cable out, which is how I charge the gimbal while using it. And on the back, it also has a USB type A, two D-tap ports, so this I run to actually power the camera, if I need to as well. So this one battery can power both the gimbal and the camera, adding a good extra two-ish hours. But wait, there's more. What's powering this is essentially six of those 1856 whatever milliamp batteries that gimbals run off of. So I actually have an extra set of six of these that I keep charged up. And so even if I run through this, and I don't have time to charge up this whole system, I could pop those out, pop six more in, and now we again have a fully loaded uh, V-mount battery. Now on the bottom here, I keep the new Raveneye transmission system, and I leave it there for a couple reasons. One, this is a very top heavy setup, and so just having a little bit of weight down here, I think just helps kind of counteract it, but it's also good just to have a transmission system nearby. I don't connect the cable all the time just to keep less cables because I don't use it often, 
but it's nice and quick to just attach the cable to the camera and this, and then I can have wireless focus pulling or just monitoring or whatever uh, of the app tools that I want. Now the gimbal actually comes with a couple different base plates. I'm using the one with a quick release, not only because it's more convenient, but actually for any Pocket 6K Pro, possibly 6K owners, you'll need this because unfortunately this axis doesn't slide in and out like a lot of gimbals, it is fixed. And if you use the regular plate, then the very wide camera body is not going to fit on here. And so you have to use this quick release because when I slide it on, you'll see that it's ever so slightly off to the side. And so I just push it as far right over as I possibly can. And that sits nice there. Now with the LiDAR system, again, most of the time you see it mounted on top and I had that at first, but it was, you know, I wanted to run my microphone as well. And there was a lot of dead space underneath the gimbal here. And so I thought of, it was kind of a genius framing idea um, to put it on a Condor Blue hot shoe that I basically just screwed into the front of the base plate. And so now this just sits perfectly right there. And that way it's always coming back to the same spot so I don't have to re-input all that uh, measurement information into the gimbal. And it's almost at the front of the lens which just kind of helps with uh, what the LiDAR camera is seeing as well as your actual camera is seeing. So I just really like this kind of setup and I think it makes it look as compact as possible and not a ton of stuff sitting on top of the camera. All right, so now we have the follow focus. I love how they did this system with kind of just this thumb screw with RE locking pins on the side that attaches to the quick release of uh, the base plate. Now, since this camera is so tall with the battery pack, the focus motor straight on the uh, built-in rod here would not reach the gears of the lens. And so I had to grab this basically extension plate that I believe also is from my Crane 3S, but it is sold separately. I'll leave it linked in the description. And this basically added extra height. If you don't have the battery grip for the 6K Pro, you will not need this. You can just put the focus motor straight on this bar. Uh, but if you have the battery grip or maybe like a Canon 1DX Mark III or, or you know, one really tall DSLRs, you may need something like this. And so this just slides back and thumb screws onto the quick release plate. Now, thankfully the thumb screw does have little notches in it as well. And if you don't want any sort of wiggling going on with your focus motor, it's always good to tighten it down with something a little stronger than, uh, than your hands. Now we just have to connect the cables from the LiDAR and the focus uh, motor. It's very important that the LiDAR goes in the bottom uh, USB-C port on the gimbal or else it will not work. It goes in here, kind of just cable manage it as neatly as one can. And last but not least, one thing that will help with micro jitters uh, is using a lens support. Both of these came with this setup and I don't think they were intended to be used this way, but since we have the LiDAR right below it, I can't use the lens support system in a regular way. Again, just using whatever this piece is with the lens support and one of the screws that it all came in the Pro Kit, I can kind of have it off center here, lift the lens ever so slightly, tighten it down, and you have a really solid lens support system. And again, if I want to power this, I would just run a USB-C cable to power this, D-tap to power the camera if I want to. That is my DJI RS3 Pro camera setup. I absolutely love this thing. Shot weddings, went on a boat, did a whole bunch of stuff. Again, you should check out the other video. And again, all this stuff will be down in the description below if you want to build out your own kit. Thanks so much for watching everybody. See you in the next video.